Mr. Wilson was a very rich man, but he had no children. When he died, he left his house and his money to his nephew, Mr. Humphreys. Mr. Humphreys was surprised because he had never met his uncle, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Humphreys left his job in an office. He went to live in his new house in the country. Mr. Humphreys was shown round the house by Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper was the estate manager. His job was to look after the house and gardens. It's a fine house, Mr. Humphreys, said Cooper. We all hope you'll be very happy here. The gardens are beautiful. I hope you like gardens, Mr. Humphreys. Yes, I do, said Humphreys, very much. Mr. Wilson's grandfather started the gardens in 1780, Cooper said. The old gentleman went to Italy and came back with some strange ideas. Humphreys looked across the garden. I see there is a Roman temple, he said. Yes, sir, there is, said Cooper. Shall we go and look at it? The two men walked through the beautiful large gardens. There were many paths, with trees and bushes on either side. The Roman temple was on top of a small hill. There was a pile of stone blocks inside the temple. What are these stone blocks for? Humphreys asked. I don't know, sir, said Cooper. They came out of the maze. The maze? said Humphreys. I didn't know there was a maze in the gardens. Did Mr. Wilson make it? No, he didn't, sir, said Cooper. Mr. Wilson's grandfather planted the trees for the maze. Mr. Wilson never went in there. He didn't let anyone else go in either. Twenty years ago, Mr. Wilson gave orders for these stones to be taken out of the maze. Then the gate to the maze was locked. No one has been in there since. Mr. Humphreys looked at the stone blocks. Each one had a letter cut into it. How interesting, he said. I want to look at this maze. It's over there, sir, said Cooper, pointing to a small wood. There's a wall around it and the gate's locked. I'll go to the house and get the key. Cooper went back to the house. Humphreys walked to the small wood. He found a wall with a gate. The gate was locked with an old padlock. Above the gate was some writing in Latin. Secretum meum mihi et filius domus mei. Let me see, Humphrey said. That means something like, My secret is for me and for the sons of my house. Well, I'm a son of the house. The secret is mine, too. He kicked the old padlock. It broke and fell to the ground. He opened the gate and went into the maze. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. A dark path led into the maze. Inside, paths ran between thick hedges of tall yew trees. It was difficult to walk along the paths. The branches of the trees had grown across the paths. They almost blocked the way. Humphreys was the first person to walk in the maze for twenty years. He walked to the centre of the maze without getting lost. This is too easy, he said to himself. A maze is a puzzle. People always get lost in a maze. A stone column stood in the centre of the maze. It was about four feet high. On top of the column there was a metal globe. There were drawings and writing on the globe. It was dark and hot in the maze. There was no wind. There was a strange silence. Humphreys noticed that the birds had stopped singing. He turned to go. Then he heard something moving in the maze behind him. He looked around. He was suddenly afraid. He thought that someone was watching him. Ah, there you are, said Cooper, coming round a corner. I followed your footprints in the dead leaves. I see you didn't need the key. Humphreys was pleased to see Cooper. He thought he was going to see someone or something else. The two men walked back to the house. Can you ask the gardeners to clear the paths? said Humphreys. Tell me, why did Mr. Wilson close the maze? I'm not sure, sir, Cooper replied. Mr. Wilson didn't like his grandfather, old Mr. Wilson, the one who planted the maze. 
He burnt all his grandfather's books. Perhaps that is why he closed the maze. What do you know about old Mr. Wilson? Humphreys asked. Not much, sir, said Cooper. He's been dead for fifty years. No one knows where he's buried. He had an Italian servant. The Italian servant buried his master at night. He was buried somewhere here in the gardens, but the grave has never been found. How very strange, said Humphreys. Mr. Humphreys went back to the house. A letter was waiting for him. Bentley Manor, the 14th of August, 1880. Dear Mr. Humphreys, you don't know me, but I am your neighbour. I am writing a book on English gardens. May I visit your garden? I am interested in the maze. I asked your uncle many times to let me see the maze, but he never let me see it. I hope you will let me see it. Also, I'd like to have a plan of the maze. I hope this is possible. Your neighbour, Lady Wardrop. Mr. Humphreys immediately replied to Lady Wardrop's letter. He invited her to visit the gardens the next day. He promised to give her a plan of the maze. I shall draw a plan tomorrow morning, he said to himself. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. He spent the evening in the library. There were thousands of books. He saw a very thin book on a high shelf. It was called The Secret of the Maze. He took the book to his bedroom. He wanted to read it before he fell asleep. He looked out of the bedroom window. There was a bright moon in the sky. The gardens were beautiful in the moonlight. White moonlight shone on the Roman temple. There was a red light in the maze. Something was burning. Of course, Humphrey said to himself, the gardeners cleared leaves from the paths of the maze this afternoon. They lit a fire to burn all the dead wood and leaves. The fire is still burning. There was one strange thing Mr. Humphreys did not like about the gardens. There was one yew tree growing alone. It stood halfway between the maze and the house. I haven't seen that tree before, Humphreys said. It's in a strange place. I will tell the gardeners to cut it down. Then he started to read the small book called The Secret of the Maze. There was a story in the book about a maze. The story happened many, many years ago. The maze was in a strange land. At the centre of the maze there was a red jewel. The jewel was very valuable. Many men tried to find the jewel. Many men went into the maze, but no one ever came out again. One day a traveller went into the maze. He saw the pathways clearly. The sun was shining. The traveller found the centre of the maze by the end of the day. The red jewel was at the centre of the maze. The jewel was the colour of fire. A voice spoke to the traveller. You have learned the secret of the maze. A doorway opened to a beautiful garden. The voice said, This is the garden of peace. You may go in, but you may never leave the garden again. Choose between the garden and the jewel. You cannot have both. The traveller wanted to be a rich man. So he took the jewel, and the garden disappeared. The traveller tried to find the path out of the maze, but he got lost. Night fell. The creatures of the night came out of the ground. They had no eyes, but they could smell the traveller. They had sharp teeth and claws. They were hungry for flesh and blood. The traveller ran along the dark pathways. The night creatures followed him. All night the traveller ran through the maze. All night the creatures followed him. In the morning, the night creatures disappeared back into the ground. Daylight came, but no sun. A thick white mist covered the maze. The tired traveller walked round the maze. At last he came to the gate. The gate was locked. Above the gate there was a sign. No man may go out of this gate unless another man comes in.
The traveller called through the gate to the people outside. Come in and let me out. I know the secret of the maze. I have the jewel. Come in here and I will make you rich. But no one came. Humphreys put the book down and fell asleep. He started to dream. He was afraid. He was not in his bed. He was standing inside a gate. He was holding something in his hand. It was hot and red. It shone with a red light. There was a white mist all around him. He was calling out loudly, Help me! Help me! Open the gate! A face appeared at the gate. He thought he knew the person's face. The person smiled. He was opening the gate. Humphreys felt happy. Free, he thought, free at last! Then he looked at the man who was opening the gate. He knew the man's face. It was himself. No, no, Humphreys cried out and woke up. He was on the floor beside his bed. The book he had been reading was gone. It was never found again. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. After breakfast, Humphreys took some paper and a pen. He went out into the garden. I will draw a plan of the maze, he said to himself. Once again he walked straight to the centre of the maze. He did not get lost. The gardeners had done their job well. The pathways were clear. The gardeners had also cleaned the metal globe. Humphreys looked at the globe carefully. A strange creature was drawn round the centre of the globe. The words Umbra Mortis, the shadow of death, were written below the creature. The creature was eating its own tail. Above the creature was a man with wings. The man's head was hidden by a ring at the top of the globe. Around the ring was written, Princeps Tenebrarum, the Prince of Darkness. The globe was very strange. Perhaps old Mr. Wilson had brought it back from Italy. Humphreys knocked on the metal globe with his hand. The metal did not seem very thick. The globe sounded hollow. Humphreys was surprised. The globe was hot. It burnt his hand. Was something burning inside the metal globe? He walked away from the globe. He started to draw a plan of the maze. It was difficult, and he made mistakes. Then it started to rain. Humphreys stopped drawing and went back to the house. In the afternoon the rain stopped. Soon after lunch, Lady Wardrop arrived. It is very kind of you to let me see your gardens, Lady Wardrop said. Tell me, do you have a plan of your maze? I started to draw one this morning, Humphrey said. Oh, good, Lady Wardrop said. Could you let me have a copy for my book? Lady Wardrop talked about gardens. She had visited all the famous gardens in England. Humphreys listened politely and led her to the entrance of the maze. Do you know the way to the centre of the maze? asked Lady Wardrop. Certainly, said Humphreys. Please follow me. They walked around inside the maze for a quarter of an hour. They walked round and round in circles. Mr Humphreys could not find the centre of the maze. I am very sorry, Lady Wardrop, he said. I was sure I knew the way. I, I've walked to the centre twice before without making a mistake. Lady Wardrop was hot and red in the face. I've seen many mazes, she said, but not one like this. It makes me feel strange. Why? Humphreys asked. Look, said Lady Wardrop, pointing to a tree. Here's my handkerchief. We came along here five minutes ago. I put my handkerchief on a tree on the right-hand side of the path. Now we've come this way again, but my handkerchief is on the left-hand side. That's because we've come from the other direction, Humphreys said. I'm not so sure, Lady Wardrop said. Also, have you noticed those holes in the ground? There is one on the left-hand side of each corner. Those are probably where the stone blocks came from, said Humphreys. We're near the gate. Shall we leave the maze and I'll show you the stone blocks? He took Lady Wardrop to the Roman temple. He showed her the stone blocks. Mr. Wilson took them out of the maze, he said. Each block has a letter cut into it. 
That is probably the answer to the puzzle of the maze," said Lady Wardrop. "Put the letters together, and they will spell words. When the stones were in their holes, you followed the words to find the centre of the maze. But of course, you had to know the words. That was the secret." "Aha! Very simple," said Humphreys as they walked back to the house. "I will let you have a plan of the maze very soon. Thank you very much." Said Lady Wardrop, "Use string." String? What do you mean? Humphreys asked. Tie a ball of string to the gate," said Lady Wardrop. "Take the ball of string with you as you go through the maze. Then you can't get lost." What a good idea," said Humphreys. Humphreys went to bed early, but did not read. He did not want any more bad dreams. He looked out of the window. He remembered the yew tree growing near the house, but he was mistaken. There was no yew tree. He looked all around. The only yew tree he could see was outside the library. He had not seen it before. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The next morning, he took paper and pencils and a ball of string into the gardens. He walked straight to the centre of the maze. How did I get lost yesterday? He asked himself. He tied the ball of string to the metal globe. Then he walked back to the gate carrying the ball of string. The string went from the centre of the maze to the entrance. Now it was easy to draw a plan, but it took him all day. He finished in the late afternoon and went back to the house for tea. There was a note from Lady Wardrop. The sixteenth of August, dear Mister Humphreys, thank you for showing me the maze. You won't forget to give me a plan, will you? Have you looked underneath the stone blocks? Have they got numbers on them? Yours sincerely, Lady Wardrop. Humphreys decided to look at the stone blocks again the next day. The evening was very hot. He opened all the windows. That yew tree outside the library window will have to be cut down. He thought. It shuts out the light, and the branches are growing everywhere. Some of them are coming into the room. He sat down and started to draw the plan of the maze. He worked until nearly midnight. From time to time, he looked at the window. He thought that there was someone outside. He felt someone was waiting to come in, but there was no one there. It was only the yew tree. He drew the last lines of his plan. As he finished, he saw a black mark on the paper in the center of the plan. He looked at the mark, but it was not a mark on the paper; it was a hole. Humphreys saw the black hole becoming larger and larger. He looked down into the hole. There was something at the bottom of the hole. Something was coming up and up. Humphreys could not move. He looked at the thing that was coming nearer and nearer. It was grey and black. It was a ball with two holes for eyes. It came nearer, and Humphreys saw a face. It was a horribly burnt face. The thing reached out two black arms to pull Humphreys down into the hole. Humphreys screamed. He threw himself backwards. He tried to get away from the burnt face and arms. He cried out as he hit his head on the wall. Then everything went black. A doctor came to see Mr. Humphreys. Mr. Humphreys needs a long rest, the doctor told Mr. Cooper. He is speaking very strangely. He is talking about some stones in a Roman temple. He wants you to go and look at them. He wants to know if there are numbers on them. Mr. Humphreys wants to know if the letters on the blocks. Spell words. Also, he wants you to open the metal globe in the centre of the maze. The doctor went on. After that, he wants you to cut down the maze and burn the trees. Lady Wardrop came to the house when she heard of Mr. Humphrey's illness. The gardeners were busy cutting down the maze and burning the yew trees. Cooper came up to her and said, "Excuse me, Lady Wardrop, but we've got two strange things here." Shall I show them to Mister Humphreys? Let me see them," said Lady Wardrop. The first thing was a broken metal globe. Inside the globe, 
was the burnt body of a man. We think it's the body of old Mr. Wilson, said Cooper. We never found out where he was buried. The second thing which Cooper showed Lady Wardrop was a row of stone blocks. They were outside the Roman temple. There was a number on the bottom of each block, said Cooper. I put them in order. I'm afraid I don't know much Latin, Lady Wardrop. Can you tell us what it means? The words on the blocks said, Penetrans ad interiora mortis. I think it means the path to the centre of death, said Lady Wardrop. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want.